Hey, it's Joe here, and I'm going to talk about the Rock Crawler Project. It's been a while since I've updated, so since uh, my last video, I have added brushless motors. So since with this eight scale Rock Crawler, it's two motors, I had to get two ESCs. I got two motors. I chose to go censored motors because censored is going to give you uh, better low end torque, uh, low speed control. Now, if you ever use censored motors, uh, the difference between these motors and a regular uh, brushless motor without sensors, a uh, sensorless motor, there's going to be a cable for encoder inputs. And the phases for your motor leads, you can't just swap leads and all that. You know, with, with a regular censored motor, you can't do that. So if you ever do, you do do this, make sure that you get that, that A goes to A, B goes to B, because otherwise it, it will not be pretty. Um, you can actually damage the motor and or ESC. So just keep that in mind. Uh, of course, uh, being a, a two motor system, it was twice as expensive as a, let's say the 10th scale rock crawler, which only has one motor and one ESC. So of course I do have the all steering still. Some other things I've changed. I've also included a video switcher. I've got a backup camera with the video switcher. I can switch between them. And that's pretty much the, the main, main things. Uh, the big thing with the brushless motor is that it's much faster. I had a lot of issues before with uh, going through sand and up steep hills. I didn't have the ability to get this, the uh, tire spinning up fast enough. Now I can uh, go up hills a lot better. And of course, the extra speed is nice. The, uh, the speed was okay. It wasn't you know, intolerable, but with the uh, increased speed, I can go much faster now, which makes transversing uh, long distances much easier. Uh, it can handle 3S, but I pretty much decided to stick with 2S. Um, reason being is that the gears, until I can find some metal gears, but the gears and the uh, differential, they are plastic and I've already uh, blown up a set. So, uh, if you do decide to put brushless motors, um, the KVs on these, I think these are uh, the, the 21.5 turn. I'm trying to remember what KV that is, but it's a, it's pretty, a pretty low KV. Um, I wasn't needing speed. Uh, being a rock crawler, torque was much more important. Um, it does pull a little bit more current, but with the uh, brushless motors versus the brushed motors, which is a little weird, but I think just because of the, the sheer power of the motors, um, because they are going faster and whatnot, you're gonna get a little bit more current pull. Uh, Trying to think here what else. Um, that's pretty much it. Now, a lot of people have questions on exactly I have this thing set up. So I'm gonna go a little bit more detail. So, of course, this has started off as an eight scale rock crawler. Now, the big difference here has been the fact that I added the uh, APM autopilot module. Now, this module interfaces with your regular receiver. So, uh, being that I'm doing more than just front and back, um, you need to get more than two channels. In fact, I'm using a uh, eight channel radio uh, that turns you not X, which is nine channel, but really in reality it's eight channels, which is plenty enough. Uh, it's a little different stirring from a stick, but you get used to it. Uh, it's more like a video game uh, with the old arcade style joystick. So um, not, too, not too big of a deal. You're not racing with it, so it's, it's not really an issue. Um, you have your, ES, your, uh, your radio receiver, and here is underneath here. It's actually right here. So from there, it goes up to your APM module. So each of these wires through here is going to be one of the uh, radio channels. So in the APM, all that data gets processed, and it's actually still controlling the motors and servos. Um, even if I'm controlling it manually, it's still going through the APM. So what also interfaces with the APM is going to be your uh, feedback devices um, that you may have. I do have the ultrasonic sensor, and I also have the GPS unit. And this GPS, I believe, does have the compass built into the GPS. So there's a compass in here, and the reason why an external compass is good is because uh, compasses don't like metal, uh, particularly any type of ferrous metal, and they also like any type of electrical impulses and all that. Being that down here, there's a, a lot of other noise and all that going on, isolating your, your, uh, your compass, uh, which the technical term for is a, was a um, hold on a second, I believe it's a, a magnometer or magnometer probably not pronouncing that correctly, but essentially it senses 
the very subtle um, magnetic field in the Earth. So, of course, the only way you can get a, a mechanical compass to work is to have a, a virtually frictionless bearing or something darn close to it. And then, as you see with the regular compass, you have to have a balance just right for that, mag that magnet in there to align with the magnetic field of the Earth. So you can imagine a sensor that can sense that. It's got to be pretty sensitive. So from there, we also have our um, telemetry. Now, for you computer nerds out there, this is essentially an a, um, asynchronous serial transceiver. It's essentially a wireless RS-232 port. In fact, whenever you connect the uh, receiver into your computer, it's actually going to register as a COM port. So it is a literally is a straight through serial connector. Um, from here, it goes to the APN. It works very good. Um, usually, they typically run on the uh, uh, shoot. Uh, what was it 57 ball or 57,000 ball around there? I'm trying to remember the exact number, but it's around that number. So from there, we can connect to it. Uh, we can do everything, including program, uh, through the serial connection. So whenever you uh, go to your APM, you're going to download the firmware for your rover project. So you're going to download the firmware. And you can do it wirelessly or through the USB. There's a USB connection in here. And it's essentially going to be the same thing. It's a USB to serial converter. Now, the other thing that this thing also has for a feedback device is going to be your power module. Now, the power module also supplies power to the APM. So it has its own power supply. So you don't have the noise from servos and all that. So this unit also tells you your voltage and it also is a current sensor. It plugs in line with your battery to your, uh, to your ESCs. So what that tells you with voltage and current, you can do a lot of things. One, you get immediate feedback of knowing uh, how, how much voltage you have in your battery. You also know how much current you're currently using. Now, what you can also do is that you can also tell, you can program the APM through the, your uh, software that you have a, let's say, 5,000 milliamp battery. And because it knows its current, and from that battery capacity, if you put in a fully charged battery, it can actually give you an estimated runtime. Or like, let's say you run it for an hour at 2,500 milliamps, then you only use 50% of the battery capacity. So you can actually calculate that for you, and you get that. Um, of course, if you do have a laptop or a netbook or anything like that that has USB, um, USB connectivity, you can use the uh, APM software. You can actually see the angle, the heading, GPS coordinates, and all that in real time, which is super cool. Of course, you put a video wow. transmitter, which I talked about before, but the video transmitter, you can get video feedback, so you can steer it and all that. And if you do do that, mount your antenna as far away from everything else that, that there is, because there is gonna be, um, even though it's 5.8 gigahertz, at least that's the one I'd recommend is the 5.8 gigahertz um, uh, radio transmitter for your video. Um, if you restrict it to 2.4, you're going to start causing problems. Um, and even with 5.8, you're going to get some bleed off um, into your other frequencies. So you want to keep that as far away as possible from everything else. Um, unfortunately, I think probably the biggest problem with this thing is that it's not waterproof, which isn't a huge deal because I don't typically you know, go out in the rain, but it can just be wet or muddy and whatnot. It would be nice to have it fully waterproof, but probably not gonna happen on this project. Might do another project where it'd be waterproof, but just simple things like this, like the little flashlights for your headlights. That was just a temporary measure, but it works so good. I really don't see the advantage of hard wiring any lights other than maybe I can get something brighter. Maybe one day I'll hook it up, but uh, typically most of your lights are going to be in a 12 volt range or you're going to have to step it down, power supplies and all that. Just Harbor Freight trash, uh, flashlights, just way easier. So if you do decide to get into the APM world with your rover, the main things that you're going to need to get are going to be your APM unit itself. Now, there's all kinds of other crazy versions out there. 2.6 is fine. If you do get a 2.7 or 2.5, it'll still all work. Um, and there's a lot of kits out there that have the GPS built in, they, they, that the GPS is included in the kit, that the power module is also included, as well as the telemetry, because you're gonna need a, a ground station and air station, of course, typically they're used with the aircraft, so ground station is gonna be what's on your laptop or computer, and the air 
which is going to be what you're going to be plugging into your rover. So that's pretty much uh, the main thing that you need to get. The uh, things like the sonar sensor and all that, you know, you can get those as well. There's a little bit more to them. Um, there's some um, other um, documentation on exactly how to set those up. There's a little more finicky, and depending on which one you get, you got to calibrate them. Uh, it's not a huge big deal, but yeah, it adds some more complexity. Um, now, the other thing too is that you can also hook up your servos. Like for instance, how my, uh, my camera and all that can be controlled. It can be set to uh, stabilize itself and all that. Um, those connect to your uh, analog outputs over here. Now these ports over here, they are uh, multifunction ports. You pretty much tell the software uh, that you want to use a camera gimbal. And then from the camera gimbal uh, settings, you can select which pins that you want to use. And then you're gonna plug in the signal side of your servo, like right here, here's one of the servos. So you're gonna, you're gonna splice it off. You're gonna go your voltage to whatever side that your uh, ESC is plug into. And then that way that supplies power to your servos. The board itself will not supply power. And even if you do try to do it, I wouldn't recommend it. So you, you pull that all directly off of your ESC um, or your, your BEC, I should say. And then from here, you run your signal wire to the uh, output pins on your, uh, on your auxiliary IO block. And then your APM software will control that, uh, those features and all that. And there's other things that you can, you can do. You can even trigger camera remotely. Um, there are some other things that you can also add. But uh, like I said, you can, you can make these, this, this project as complicated as you want. But really and truly, the meat is the 80% like, the of what you're going to be doing is the autonomous missions, which is simply GPS and your compass and your autopilot system and your telemetry because you're going to want to know you're going to, you're going to want to be able to see where it is on the old google earth uh, map and uh even though it's not absolutely necessary it's pretty much going to be the only way that you're going to be able to tell it where it is because you really don't want to be connecting cables up to it all the time it just it it's not that fun so anyways so hope I kind of give a little bit more of a rundown on exactly how to do that. I might do a video that actually does a step-by-step -step building of a rover. Uh, I've got a little eight scale uh, buggy that I might be converting over. So if I do do that, I'll do a step-by-step -step build on exactly what I'm doing. But um, there's plenty of links and all that that you can find. But I find that the, the, I still took a long time for me to try to get my head wrapped entirely around. There's a lot of little videos out there, but there's nothing real all too encompassing. So I probably will make an effort to make a complete build from scratch, how to set up every single thing to make it work. But until then, if you have any questions, I'd be uh, happy to try to answer them for you. But main thing is, is get the hardware and go from there. So hope you enjoyed my video and have a good day.